baby girl. What's up, Homestead homies? It's Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. Today we have, uh, I told you guys, uh, we had somebody special coming. And I think they're just about here. So <clears throat> we got uh, some of the garden in, as you can see. Um, yesterday we had bad rainstorms and we had some hail. And uh, it's just crazy, man. It's just springtime weather. So we're going to uh, uh, see who the special visitor is and what's going on with that. And then uh, we'll see what happens the rest of the day today. Man, you just follow us. Mr. Trent, what's up? How you doing? What's up, buddy? Good to see you. This is my friend Trent. We've been friends for over I mean, it's like 20, 20 years. something plus years. Yeah, used to work together a long time ago. Yeah, if you guys want to know about the funny stuff, uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit later and we can ask him how he, how he sees us, how Stacy and I live now versus how he knew us uh, when we lived in the city. But what he's got back here. The unveiling of Sir Duck a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is our be our first duck on the homestead. The story is that Trent had a neighbor that got a couple ducks, and then they let them out too early, and one got uh, taken away. One went missing. Yeah. So he brought this one up here to have a nice, healthy, happy home. Domesticated duck. So we're gonna probably build him a little duck house today and get them all set up. We brought a little pool up for them and everything, so that'll be pretty cool. So we're going to take them out right now just to get them off this truck. You open it up, he should follow you around. You want to let them out now? Or? I mean, you can, but I like to usually let them set up for a day or two just to kind of know where they're at. And then get yeah, him back in there. Him. Can you catch him? Yeah, he'll go back in. But he probably needs to go for a swim. He hasn't been for a swim this morning yet. <laughs> in the pond at home, we have, he goes for a swim every morning. Come on, buddy. Come on, ducky duck. Here, we'll take him over here. Come on, little buddy. Come on, little buddy. Hey, no. Here's that water. Hey. Hey, you good girl. She won't do nothing. Else. He just wants to sniff it to the truck. Let's sniff at him. Hey, little buddy. <laughs> oh, beginning to see something new. <laughs> he does got a little character to him, doesn't he? Yeah. smell everything and everybody kind of comes up and pecks at it and sees what's up. Come on. Follow me. Come on, little baby. Come 
on, little baby. Come on. Come on. Come on, little ducky duck. Come on. Come on. Come on. Is he coming? No. He will. Something else is coming. Though. He'll come with the safety side. Come on. Come on, little ducky duck. Again. Come on. Atta boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. 32, 18. Man, you guys, so yeah, this is my buddy Trent. I've been knowing him for, uh, well, I mean, a long time. Man, it, when we look back on it, it's hard to believe it's been over 20 something yep. years. I mean, that's crazy. Um, he lives in town and, uh, <clears throat> it's kind of cool to uh, talk to him to be like uh, the perspective, you know, of us, how we used to live versus how we live now, you know. Not different. That's for <laughs> sure. Yep. Had a big business, big house, people working for you, warehouse full of tools and stuff. And you come out here, you got no electricity, no water. I mean, when I told you I was doing peaceful. this, when I told you I was going to do this, I mean, what do you really think about it? I thought you'd last about a year or so. <laughs> A lot of people did. Yeah. Thought you last about a year or so, and then decide, yeah, that's not for me, and then move on back into town, or you know, at least get you some water running to the house, or some electricity, or some solar, or something. Yeah, I mean, it was a while. Do you came up? I mean, that cabin was already built when you first yeah. came up, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, everything was pretty much done. Yep. So I mean, like when you're visualizing, like when I'm talking to you on the phone or whatever, I mean, what were you visualizing like? Um. Yeah, but I don't remember visualizing anything. I I just know that. You know, as far as you say you were building cabin, I didn't think it would be that nice. I figured it would be some little shack, you know, with some... Uh, like an animal like, hut. Kind of like a lean-to <laughs> yeah. for humans. So, no, that's nice, you know. It's got a loft and everything inside. And... Yeah. <clears throat> it is. It's crazy to see somebody. It's like a, ra it's a radical transformation, isn't it? Yep. And then especially like, you know, the beard. And I already kind of had a beard going in town, but the clothes and just the simple life. And, I mean... It's just, it is yeah. kind of different. Yep, yeah. definitely different. Yeah, it was uh, it was shocking to a lot of friends of mine uh, that we were going to go this route, be more sustainable. But now that you see everything kind of, I mean, it's been, you know, we're on our fifth year. I mean, as you're seeing more things come together, you can kind of yeah see what we're really trying to yeah. achieve, right? Yeah, yeah been, more it's probably pretty hard at first, you know, it's probably a lot of learning curve for you. Yeah. You know, it's probably pretty hard at first because, you, you know, you don't have all the money just to buy everything you need. Right. And, got to build it over time and right. so there's a lot of people you know have a couple hundred grand in the bank and then they do it but they can buy everything they need or a lot so of people a little different than yeah and a lot of people they think they're going to just go out and, and do this and they expect it to be like it's just going to be like bam yeah you know what i mean Instant. and they, they don't have the couple hundred grand is what i'm saying right. like they just have some money um you know 50 40 60 000, whatever it is and then they just get there and then they get overwhelmed with it takes time so to build the to infrastructure, right? I mean, people can't believe that we hauled water in one-gallon jugs, five-gallon buckets for, you know, yeah. four years. Yep. You know, but it's just takes over time. the last year or so, you've moved all your fence to. Yeah. Sheep can go all the way around. Before you had the chickens in a fence in this big area. Now they get the open range everywhere. So. Yeah. And then we see the difference in the eggs and the health of the chickens too, with them um, being out and able to open range and go wherever they want. And, uh, you know, we have Easter egg hunts or whatever you want to call them every day, but normally they'll they'll lay their eggs right in the in the in the nest box in the chicken house, and they come back every night. So yeah, it's uh, it, but you do notice a difference for sure in the egg quality if your chickens can be out open ranging, no boundaries, eating bugs and and the grass seeds and stuff. Yep, your eggs are really yellow and big. Yeah, compared to what we're used to at home. Yeah. Yeah. And what other things like do you, you know, that you think about like with our life transformation? Um, Would you do yeah. it? I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know about that. He might, but his wife won't. Yeah. Maybe maybe when I retire or something. Um, I would definitely need electricity and running water. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, just the self-sustainable part. I mean, oh, he yeah. like to grow. He um, yeah. grows his own food at, on this on some small spaces at raised bed gardens at his house in town, but. I mean, you can definitely see the benefit of being self-sufficient, oh, yeah. you know. Yep. 
Yeah, it's a lot more rewarding too. You're growing your own stuff. You know what you're putting in it. You know what soil you're using. You know that your raised beds aren't stained with some kind of right. you know arsenic or something like that. Right. It's just there's more to it than. And your meat, you know, I mean, you know what, how the meat's been fed, and, yep. and you know, a lot of places say that um, like uh, beef is grass fed. Like we drive around fields around here, and they'll say that they're grass fed. But what they do is they turn those um, cows out on um, um, crow, well, row crop fields right. that have weeds and grass growing up in them until they um, cultivate them again. Yeah. And then they call that grass fed beef. But basically, that ground is so tainted with chemicals that the grass that they're eating is, is just yep. just as bad, you know what I mean? And some will say grass fed and corn ration at the end too. Right, so, the corn ration, right. So that's a big difference. You can have a right. you know nine month old cow and they start corn rationing them to put weight on them. They fatten them up. Yeah, I've yep. seen actually, um, I know people around here that actually feed the cows bread and everything uh, just to get the weight on them. And there's yep. stories, if you look online, you can see about people, they feed the uh, cows like concrete dust just to get the weight on them because it's all about the weight. So. Yeah, being close to your food has been definitely a plus for us. You know, I mean, we can, I can feel it um, in my health and my uh, energy levels and the taste of the food, you know. And you grow hair quicker too that way. Yeah, I grow hair quicker. You can yeah. definitely see that that's working pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah, tr uh, actually Trent got a cow with us one year, right? Yep. Still has it. I mean, they're not. Still have some left. <laughs> yeah. We're not big steak eaters, but we got through most of the roast and stuff. And right. Brought you some steaks today that I made. And we were talking about um, maybe a, uh, your kid coming up for 30 yeah. days or something um, for the experience of living like this and, and getting this head out of video games a little bit, kind of decompress, um, you know, from the get city away from life. The processed foods, and right? The junk they let him get at school and stuff like that, and which will be good for his health. And he's he's a little challenging sometimes, so get him out here and he can run around do his thing. Yeah, he's at that age, boy. Yeah. Talk about challenging. I was a handful. <laughs> I know. Me I too. can speak his language. <laughs> yeah. uh, what about the uh, sisters? Is this the first time you've seen yeah, them in that's person? Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, on film you can't really tell how big they are, and then you get up, they're like, I mean, they're huge. It's big pieces of, you know, machinery there, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, just looking like from here to our cabin, you wouldn't think that it would like come out of the faucet yeah. like that, huh? Nope. I didn't, and I, those pumps too, the pumps there. Yeah, the running. hydrants. I mean, I was totally surprised by, uh, I mean, you, 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 it looks like on paper it'll work. Yeah. But it's like, man, until you I see it. I still don't understand how you get the pressure. Yeah. Well, it's just the tanks are, are filled. Yeah. So it's pushing the water in. So like a level on a leveler. Yeah. The, the water has to level out. So the water's gonna travel through the pipes and because that that is level with the tanks, it's gonna push the water to make it level. Oh, I got you. So the lower actually we get in water in here, a little bit less pressure we'll have over there. So when one tank lowers, the other one goes to fill back up to level it out? No, both tanks fill and lower oh, simultaneously, but it's the pressure in the lines that when it actually yeah. reaches the faucets, because the water wants to go to a path of least resistance yeah. and it wants to level out. So like if our um, like sinks were on like the second story of that house, yeah. it wouldn't work as well because then the water has to push way too high yeah. up. But because there, there was just enough fall and the way I built it up inside, that it, it allows the water to be the pressure and then it wants to level itself out. Now will those freeze in the winter? No, no? nothing freezes in the winter. Uh, it might get a little chilly um, in the winter time, um, so I got a barrel stove in there that I, last year I lit up twice. I mean the lines that run under the ground. No, 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 they're under the frost line. Uh -huh. So it's 36 inches um, deep, three feet deep, all the way to the cabin. And then under the cabin, it stays relatively consistent temperature. It's a lot of pressure. It's amazing how much pressure you get. Yeah, until I'm like, like I said, until you see it actually work, it's like, dang. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes out, you saw it come out of the spigot. I mean, yeah. it looks like, like a well was pumping it or yep. city water or whatever. I mean, it comes yep. out a little bit different, but it, it comes out pretty good. It's not quite as tasty as the chlorinated water we drink. <laughs> and the fluoride and all yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the chlorine really adds some flavor. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. Brain density flavor. Yep. Yeah. Now you see we got the reds raised beds going uh, where we used to do the plowing and stuff. So. And your sheep are on the back by the pine where last time I came up here they could only stay over here. So. Yeah. Yeah. We got that all opened up and fenced off and. So we got, um, <clears throat> there's basically like uh, one, two, three, four. I got about four or five pastures they can eat off of and then in the fall I'll turn them loose around the house um, once Stacy's little plants and everything are you know, going dormant so they can do what they want to do. But right now if I let them in here, 
um, like people were talking about on our grass cutting video that I did a couple days ago, but they'll eat the flowers, they'll eat the apple trees, they'll eat the blackberries, and that's you know definitely what we don't want. Yep. <laughs> they're like, uh, I mean, they're, they just eat everything, so. I noticed you got a thing that looks like a spigot coming up out of the, is that like a shower or spray or something? This What's thing right here, thing? Yeah. that's our outdoor shower that I have yet oh, to hook okay. up. I'm gonna get that hooked up here pretty soon. And then we'll have outdoor shower. Um, and then after that, I'll be moving on to working on the hot water setup, how we're gonna have, we heat, heat the water off the stove right now, but obviously July, August, we really don't, June, we really don't use the inside stove. So it's a little more um, labor intensive to heat water. So when, I'm, when I get my hot water system in, it'll be gravity fed, same system. And then when the water heats, it provides a push. Yeah. So you'll have gravity from there when the water expands and heats, and then that'll push it in through the spigot in the house to the tub and then to this outdoor shower as well. Yep. So it's just stuff we're learning and uh, checking into and, and putting into practice and seeing what works and what doesn't work. But it's definitely a lot different than just like, you know, what Turn we're used to, on. right? And yep. Wasting it, you know I mean? Right now you value the value that you place on things like water and food, and it's just so much different than it was, you know. Yeah, it's work to get. Living it. in town, right. And it's just precious, you know. Yep. Yeah, it's just a whole different mindset. Especially like for us living four years with gallons of water and jugs, you know, five gallon buckets. I mean, when we used water, we were very like sparing, you know. Yep. So 3,000 gallons for us, I mean, that's like endless supply. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's cool. Uh, we really enjoy it out here so far. The duck looks like it'll do fine here too. We're gonna yep. get probably four or five, six more ducks. So it'll have some partners to play with. This will kind of get us motivated and kick started, you know. But I just thought you guys would like to uh, hear some of uh, Trent's views on uh, kind of like, you know, our transition. So that was cool. So we'll check back with you guys in a little bit. We'll see what uh, we can get finished up for the rest of the day. See ya. See ya. Okay guys, so um, I'm getting ready to bottle some kombucha up. It's really cool that we have our friend Trent up here. Um, Doug has known him for, gosh, over 20 years. And actually, Trent's wife is one of the reasons, it is the reason I guess Doug and I met because she played in a, a band and we were listening to her and her band sing. So that's actually how we met. But it's really neat and then it's so awesome that we have a duck finally because I wanted to get some ducks this spring. So this is the first one of many ducks that we're going to be starting here on the homestead. But I'm getting ready to do some kombucha and I'll just bring you guys along. Um, I try to make a couple gallons a week because we do go through it a lot. But all I'm going to do here is get my little scoby guy and I'm going to put him in my bowl. And then pour a little bit in there for later. And then I save all my bottles. Whenever I can get bottles, I save them in my funnel. I'm just going to go ahead and bottle it. What I've been doing lately, and I kind of been liking it, I usually make it with black tea. So the past few batches, I've been doing half green and half black. And I kind of like the milder taste. So we've been doing that lately. So that's my new thing. always go a little too much. So I'm going to bottle these and then I let them set out a couple days and then I go ahead and refrigerate them. So I'm going to do all these and if you guys are interested still and anybody's interested in a SCOBY, let us know. So usually in my gallon, it works out great and it's perfect. When I make a gallon, I usually get seven of these. For 16 ounces so it works out good and then I have a lot of extra juice that I can save for the next batch or that I can put in another batch that I might be saving for other things and I have to say I have to tell you guys I got home late last night because I do work two days a week and I get home late and I got home and it just, the house just like looked different. <laughs> so I come home and the, sh the floor, the cabinets, everything was like so clean. 
I couldn't even believe it. And the dishes were done. So Doug did, at, did it and I can't even believe it, but he did a really good spring cleaning job. I mean, absolutely awesome. I was so surprised. I couldn't even believe it. And he even came up with a really neat um, recipe for cleaning the floor, which I just thought was totally cool. So I really want to thank Doug for that one because that really made my night and I can't even believe it. It's so nice. And it's been raining here and everyone has dirty feet and I am trying so hard to keep everything nice and clean. But I'll thank him very much for that. So that was awesome. All right. We'll see you guys later with some other stuff. Alright, so she had another stash of sweet orange in there I found. So we're just going to put some dashes of uh, sweet orange in there.